So, for the longest time, as people ask me, what saw should I buy? I've always had kind of a smart aleck equip that really, a saw is only as good as the last person who sharpened it. So it really doesn't matter how much you spend on it. Find one that's carpet, uh, comfortable and get it sharpened well, and you'll be able to be the best of the best. Well, I don't know if that is just dogma I read so far long ago and I've repeated so often that I now believe it as my own, or it's just a little confirmation bias that I've never been able to afford really nice, expensive hand saws from boutique markets. Anyways, I would started a new uh, series of videos where for the new woodworker we are starting with very, very basic tools. So I thought I'd just put this to the test. I went out and bought me a $20 handsaw. This was actually $25 to get to my door. And, and this is the model that some of the people I respect most in Texas woodworking have used for years as their main dovetailing saw. The ones they started out with that they just kept using for decades on end because they returned good results because they were the ones that were sharpening it. What is it? Well, it's just a classic. It's got a wood handle, nice standard shape. I'm not going to say anything special about it. It does have a folded brass back, nice spring steel, 15 teeth per inch. I don't have my glasses on, so let me see. Looks like it is it's actually filed. Yeah, I would say that's filed rip. Maybe with a little bit of angle to it. Is the handle straight? And maybe it's a little bit off. We'll see about fixing that. So what I thought I'd do is I will cut a few uh, dovetail tails with it as a base. Take some just general measurements. Then I will sharpen it up myself and test it out again and see if I've made it any better or if it can compete with... Uh, the dovetail saw I've been using for the past probably eight years. They're both eight inchers. Uh, this one is 20 TPI. This one's going to be set to 15 just because that's where it's, it came from the factory. And I'm going to stick with that same uh, tooth TPI. I'll probably just change up the geometry a little bit because man, does these do these look like they're wow, they just look like they're straight V's, not canted at all. Anyways, I will get that baseline. We'll get my test area. I can make my comparison, but really that doesn't say much because as I said earlier, I don't have much experience with the uh, high dollar boutique saws. So I'm going to ship this off to an expert in the field, so to speak. Shannon Rogers from the Renaissance Woodworker. If you're just getting in into hand saws, which you know, if you're looking at this, I assume you are, he'd be a great person to follow the Renaissance Woodworker on YouTube. He has a lot of free content. In addition, he runs a hand tool dedicated woodworking school online you might want to check out. Well, he's been playing around with saws forever, it seems like, but he also has a lot of experience with these boutique saws, the classic saws, adjusting them, changing them, that kind of stuff. So, I'll send off my tuned up version of a $20 saw and see how it stacks up with his good stuff. But first, let's get some baseline measurements. Okay, we're doing going to do a baseline test. And basically, this is an exercise I do, use to teach students that a properly tuned saw, you do not have to put pressure down. It has enough weight in the back to do all the gravity force it needs. So we're actually going to saw it, holding the saw like this right here, so that there's no way I can put down or pressure on. The only thing I can do is move it back and forth. Now, in complete honesty, I did this test one time. This is the very first cut we did on this. I just forgot to turn the camera on. So I'm going to label that A. That took me 173 strokes in order to bottom this plate out. So here's how I did it. I put it in the saw vise. I started sawing even, just like I normally would. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 40, 60, 70, 80, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 210, and well, let's just call it 210. So, I think it is fair to say that this brand new saw is so dull it wouldn't register on the IQ scale. So, let's see what happens if I simply sharpen it. Now, this isn't going to be a sharpening tutorial. I actually have an entire video out there on saw maintenance and stuff like that where I'll go into a lot of detail on sharpening saws. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the indentations of the tooth pattern, readjust the geometry to ones that Mr. Rogers, uh, Shannon Rogers, told me that would probably work for him in a saw this size dedicated to a dovetailing purpose. And then we'll see what the results are on that same test. To give you an idea of how dull this saw was, right now I'm just setting all the teeth rake to zero, meaning they're going to be straight up and down. Well, I can run my finger along this right here, no damage whatsoever. I come over here and it is gripping my finger so much because of the thing, if it was actually slide, I'm sure it would cut me. See the difference? This one, it slides, this one. It grips this way, but slides this way. Grips this way, slides that way. That's how sharp it is just from setting the rake to zero. Got a long ways to go. Probably take me 10 minutes to get through the whole thing. So hopefully this will give you an idea of what I'm doing. Right now I'm just resetting the all the rake to zero. Where right about there, I found all these on this side. This is the toe side, that is the heel side. So from about here forward, it looks kind of, the teeth kind of like look like the edge of this uh, cutting, uh, this knife. Whereas they're pretty much straight up and down and on the back side is sloped fairly low. Whereas all the other teeth over here the V is right in the middle so the front slope and the back slope is exactly the same I imagine that's just easier to cut that way but it is not a crosscut saw in that the teeth are filed straight across so it is a rip cut it's just very very relaxed so that it's easier for newbies to start but once again it takes forever to saw because it's not really a cutting action it's more of a scraping action so it has to be perfectly sharp to do that
So now I've set the rake to zero on all these teeth and I'm going to go uh, then uh, jointed the edges so I could see a little bit of uh, silver on the top of each of these black painted teeth. I repainted them and now I'm going to set my uh, the rake to about five degrees. That's what Shannon asked for. I'm also going to rotate the file so I'm on a fresh edge. Shannon also said that he likes a little bit of fleeing in his dovetail saws. So on I'm, every other tooth, I'm going to slightly move my body one way or the other just to give him, you know, two to five degrees as he asked for. And this time, I'm just taking some light strokes because I don't have to remove as much metal. Now the saw, it came with a whole lot of set on either side. And I was kind of hoping that all this filing would get rid of most of it. But I'm first going to stone both sides of it a little bit. That will remove, remove both sides. It will also even out in case there's a burr, a, a burr. It's going a little bit higher than one or the other. And that took care of most of it. My other option was I was going to put it between two pieces of brass and just kind of tack it down to kind of rebend them up. If I next time I saw it, I will have to reset them with a little tool that sets them to both sides. But that should be okay. So now let's fix this kind of crooked handle. Now I don't want to bend the back, but I just want to kind of realign it because evidently the hole that they drilled for this to sit in wasn't completely straight. So if I just figure out which way it is, drop it in my vise, so I'm only working on that part of the handle, and then just a little trial and error, bend it the other way. Pretty good. And if the blade was somehow bent a little bit, but you know, that's going to be straight. I don't know what they would do to bend that in manufacturing. Well, the blade is not actually glued in or anything like that. It's just held in with friction. So if you just give it a good solid whack, it will reseat at the bottom of that brass thing. Normally it straightens it right out. So let's go back to our test board. We we'll draw a line right down to separate the first section. So we'll label this side B. Now let's see how long it takes to bottom out the saw. We've got our two finger grip so I can't put any weight down. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 29 compared to 173 or 210. I'd say that works a little bit better. But here's another thing. Take a good look at the quality of the cut. See how much cleaner and straighter that one is compared to that one? Those two, how much rougher they are? How about the back side? Cleaner, straighter, thinner curve. So I guess the real test is, will it cut a dovetail? I got two boards. Let's cut us a do quick dovetail. Mark one side and the other side. Flip it over. One side, the 
the other side. Come over a little bit. Stupid coping saw. Cut the side. out the waist. Clean up the baseline. In. Try not to pinch your fingers off. I'm going to mark a pencil line on this side so I know which way it goes. pencil lines so they are not my lines but I'm just doing a utilitarian dovetail so it doesn't really matter blow it just tells you the ch chisel is not sharp enough but once again don't really care Clean it up. Pencil lines. And let's knock it down. Eh. For utilitarian joint, good enough. But the saw. Now it works just fine. Now for me, that's all fine. There's nothing special about it. I particularly don't like the uh, kind of filmy finish on the handle, but I have a feeling a little lacquer spirit will take care of that one. Uh, the shape of this handle, I just like the way my fingers fit on it, but it's also because I've probably been using this thing for better part of a decade. This thing cuts just fine. 20 bucks versus, I think these are going for 70 or 80 right now. Yeah. I don't think the wood can tell the difference.
So, I guess that means I get to find out if my quick little, I'm not even going to call it tuning up. I really did just sharpen it and, you know, bend it around a little bit. Something you would do, that's an average sharpening. Nothing, but I didn't even set the teeth on it. So let's send it to uh, Shannon and see what he thinks about a $20 saw compared to his $100, $200, $300 plus saws. I'll put a link in down below not only to his Renaissance channel, but to, to his Hand Tool School website and the video he puts out about this thing. And in the end, remember that it is always worth the effort to learn, create stuff, and share it with others so that maybe you can save a little money too. Y'all be safe and have fun.